my friends so for today's video i thought i would do a like get ready with me like a chatty get ready with me because i realized that a lot of my videos i don't really share anything about myself i kind of just talk about like where i am or where i'm going and things like that so i thought this would be kind of a more intimate experience that sounds wrong that doesn't sound right a better way for you to get to know me so starting off this is the face we're working with um, <laughs> I put on um, my toner which is the Laneige cream moisturizer toner and then I also put on my sunscreen which is this super goop unseen one and my uh, moisturizer of choice is the ultra repair cream from first aid beauty i'm just gonna start with the fenty beauty this is like the soft silk pro filter hydrating primer base i don't think you can tell but like i've used up like up until there so right now i'm just trying to get this over with and get it done um for today's video i thought i would talk about something that's been on my mind a lot which is living in korea and just like my experiences in Korea it kind of makes me sound like I live in Korea which I don't I've been wanting to move to Korea well I've been wanting to do that since I was a kid like I've always wanted to live there but you know I always thought like oh like my 20s is when I'm going to do it and I'm in my 20s now so I feel like it's definitely something I've been thinking about a lot I think for sure like the accessibility of TikTok and you know being able to see people everywhere is definitely adding to it a creator that I've been watching a lot lately is Anna and Soul this is the Sephora no Selena Gomez rare beauty foundation and just going in with my beauty blender this is my first time buying a beauty blender and it's tiny like are they always as tiny did I buy the wrong one is it gonna expand as I use it? I don't know. But yeah, so I've been watching her TikToks a lot and it like always makes me want to move to Korea and stuff. And I'm also conflicted because I think when I first think of it, I want to move because like the food is good there. Like everything seems to be a lot more accessible. But I don't know how I could survive financially. Like where would I work? Um, Cause everyone knows like Korean or Asian companies have very like toxic work culture and so I like that's always something that gets me in college I really wanted to like become an English teacher in Korea that was like my plan for like I don't know a year or so for my experiences in Korea the last time I went was after I had graduated high school so that was 2016 summer of 2016 before coming to college so I went by myself but all my friends also went by themselves so we all went and met up in korea um and it, like we all stayed with our own like families in korea but we all hung out every single day and it was like a lot of fun i really liked how the subway system is so like well done <laughs> well created i don't know everything is so intertwined and so easy to access granted it is a very you know tiny country so I definitely appreciate how like you don't need to drive for the most part because I have a car here that I pay monthly for and I don't ever use it because I hate driving I get driving anxiety and I always wish I lived somewhere that did not require me to have a car that was definitely a pro also I like got my eyebrows um, ombre powder tattooed a while back which definitely has been a lifesaver because before this, I had no eyebrows. Like, I just like have no hair on my body in general. Like, I've never like shaved my arms or my legs because I just don't have hair. But that also applies to my freaking eyebrows. But anyways, one thing that I very clearly remember from Korea is like I was staying with one of my like um, kumos. I was staying with her and my cousin in their place. I was like pretty thin. Um, and that I think was like probably the thinnest I had ever been maybe I want to say um, in terms of my legs and so here I always heard people like you need to like gain more weight on your legs like you need to work them out and like make them look healthier I even had a boy I dated in high school he once told me he was like oh like why can't your legs look like this other girls that we knew from what I remember she was like super athletic and super like 
built and then he ended up um, being not very faithful to me with her so that should have been a red flag right then and there so that was kind of like the gist of it in America and then I go to Korea and immediately I get told like like oh like your legs are really like chunky like you should lose some weight on them and stuff so it's definitely very confusing okay this get ready with me is going horribly because I can't multitask but I did my brows and now moving on to my eyeshadow this is the only eyeshadow palette I own and use so it's basically I do the same look every day I only have these four colors but with my finger I just kind of like take this like brown shadow and just kind of put it all over my eyes um, doesn't matter where you put it because at the end of the day I feel like my eyeliner eats it all up and nothing ever shows I also almost got double eyelid surgery when I went to Korea um, that was like something I've been wanting to do for I think probably my whole life like you grow up and you see on social media like all like the idols and all the k-pop idols and stuff they all have like huge double eyelids like super cute eyes huge eyes and stuff and my eyes were always one of my biggest self-conscious things about myself um that's why also for the longest time i did not let people see me without makeup because you know, with eyeliner and stuff, you can hide a lot of it. But once you strip all that down, it's just, you know, monolids. And I was, like, very embarrassed of looking like that, looking, like, the way I did and stuff. And so my entire life, I just kind of wanted double eyelids. That was, like, my biggest dream, my biggest goal. And I genuinely thought, like, once I got double eyelids, um, like, all my life's issues, like, would be solved, essentially. And so I go to Korea and halfway while i'm in korea my dad texts me and he's like i'll let you get your double eyelid surgery i was so ecstatic because you know that's all i've been wanting my entire life then my aunt comes through and says no like she can't get it done like blah blah she's too young like it's not gonna look good on her whatever whatever i think like the logical excuse that she used was that it was hot like it was in the summer and it wouldn't heal well which i think is valid i just wanted to get that stupid surgery and do it obviously i didn't get it done <laughs> in the end but now i'm not sure where i stand i think i've definitely grown to be okay with my monoliths like i've they've grown i've grown into them no like i think now i like flip back and forth whether i want to or not still some days i'm like you know like monoliths are pretty cool like you can do a lot of stuff with them but other days i'm like you know like it'd be so much better like life would be so much easier if i just had double eyelids speaking of eyelids i'm about to do my eyeliner which i definitely cannot multitask for so this is just the essence 24 ever ink liner in intense black um, so I'm just gonna do that real fast. I was always told that I would get double eyelids when I grew up because both my parents grew up monolided and then they like formed their double eyelids like later on. And so I always thought I would get it like in my junior years, my teen years, and then they came and went and I was still left with nothing. <laughs> I look crazy with just one eyeliner, so I'm just gonna do the other <laughs> real fast. Okay, never even, but it's okay. Okay, moving on, I'm going to do my bronzer. I have no idea how to use bronzer, so I just kind of toss it on my face. I remember Korea was so freaking cheap with their alcohol, like less than a dollar or like maybe just around a dollar. And so we would all just like drink every day. It's always such a scam because now when you go to like the Korean market here or you go to Korean restaurants where they sell like soju is so freaking expensive it's like what like eight dollars for a bottle or something it was like stupid expensive here one of my favorite things ever is cacao talk one of my favorite memories is going to the freaking katok store in korea that was amazing i literally was saving up all my money so i could go there and spend it all i went with one of my friends from high school and um, he and I were just like walking around the entire, I think it was like two stories or something. So I walked around, I barely bought anything because I was overwhelmed. And then I walked out and he like walks up to me and he goes, hey, like I got this thing for you. And so I look and he got like a keychain and I think it was a pen. And I was like, oh, like when did you buy this? And he was like, don't worry about it. And then I realized that he stole the freaking stuff. I don't know how he stole it and got away with it, but
but I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere on there or a little bit after our faces were like on the internal networks of Katok being like these two little punks. Well, I was just an accomplice. I didn't even know. Does that make me an accomplice if I didn't know during the action, but I knew afterwards and I didn't correct it? Probably. But earlier when I was talking about watching Anna in Seoul and her TikToks, I freaking love those little cups of ice and then she like pours a little drink into it. That makes my brain tickle every single time. Sometimes I'm like, what if I could just pack up my entire life? Whatever I can fit into a suitcase is what I'm taking with me and that's it for me here. I have that thought literally every single day. There's a lot more to think about because I have to think about my boyfriend and my two dogs and this house that is under our name. I always thought living in Korea would be like basically impossible unless I either decided to suck it up and like work for like Korean company culture or I got like a job that allowed me to be completely remote but that definitely is a lot harder than it sounds now that they just lifted their borders I definitely have been thinking about like taking another trip there but then my next issue is like I think to like properly explore I would definitely say you need about three weeks I feel maybe you could stretch it not stretch it like shrink it down to two weeks but i'm like how do i take that time off of work this is just a sign that getting older sucks um before when you had all the time as a kid to like travel like in college and stuff uh you had no money and now that you have money kind of i feel like i'm still struggling to find the time to get off work Also, I just got my face dermaplaned recently for the first time and my makeup is getting like so well absorbed like before I would definitely um, see like dry patches it would definitely show like over the bumps on my forehead and stuff and around here but now it feels so smooth and I feel like the makeup just kind of blends into my skin very well I don't know if anything in this video made sense I just kind of like rambled about the stuff that happened or that popped up in my head and I also have really bad memory so I probably uh, skipped out on a lot of stuff that is what's been on my head lately this is the Lior, Lior, Dior Lip Maximizer Hyaluronic Lip Plumper that I had in my like Sephora haul from like a year ago so this is the final look this is the look every time I go out I know no other makeup look um, it's always this <laughs> so i think that was it for this video i don't know if anything i said made sense but hopefully you were able to learn one or two new things about me um probably just how chaotic my brain is and how i can multitask but anyways i hope you guys have a good rest of your day and i'll see you next time bye